Hello YouTube, this is an alcohol review of Glendalough Irish Whiskey. This Quinta label is double barrel, which means it was aged twice, two different barrels. First in bourbon, second in sherry barrels. Quinta label, 42% alcohol by volume, 750 ml bottle. The short story on the back proclaims St. Kevin, the man on a bottle, stood apart. This whiskey does the same. It has sucked the marrow out of two casks. An American bourbon barrel given sweet toasted vanilla notes. A Spanish sherry barrel adding hints of dark dry fruit and slight nuttiness. Non-chill filtered for true character. Straight out of Glendalough Distillery, Wicklow, Ireland. No. I always find it interesting when they talk about aging in sherry barrels. One of my favorite rums, it was a, a short run that was aged in sherry barrels. And it has a wonderful uh, cherry dried fruitiness to the spiced rum. And it was, uh, I keep I, one of the very last bottles I could find, I keep on the back shelf in my uh, liquor area. I would say cabinet, but it's not a cabinet. All right. Going to the tape, single grain, double barrel aged. It has a wood, love that. It has a wood top to it with cork that has been crushed and glued together. Interesting. Interesting in that I've mentioned this multiple times on past reviews that when it comes to the cork, uh, there was a cork issue many years ago that apparently the world has not fully recovered from. And to get around the cork shortage, they would crush the remnants, glue together, synthetics, things like that. Obviously, going back to cork now is a little on the expensive side. So it kind of shows how much money a company is willing to put into their packaging by the material their cork is made out of. The truer the cork, as it being cork, a bit more expensive is going to be. Alrighty. There we go. The camera goes crazy. It is a, well, kind of a light honey yellow. Shades a red, barely, mostly caramel yellow, obviously heavy on the yellow. We'll give it our swirl. In case you're new, the reason for the swirl is to get a visual on whether or not it is going to be sweet or heavy on the palate. You can all do this just by eye before we even get a chance to even taste it have an idea what exactly what well, gives us an idea of what to expect it is slow to tear very slow to tear yeah implying that it's going to be a heavy mouthfeel because it sticks up on the side of the glass <laughs> That heavy mouthfeel is usually from lots of latent sugar still left in solution. So it implies it's going to be a touch syrupy and a touch sweet, at least in the back of the palate. When it starts to go, it goes, but still, it's very slow. All right, that is our expectation. Now that is odd. What a very strange, strange uh, nose note, glass note, glass nose, no, um, nose note. Usually there is a, a whiskey, but it's like a watered down whiskey type of note that you get when it comes to your Irish whiskeys. 
but my palate says this. May not be with yours, but mine says it's a watered down weekend type of whiskey. It's way in the background on this. The notes in the foreground, the notes that are taking up all the space. It's a sweetness, a, we call it an oaky, but it's not quite oaky. I'm getting no cherry, vanilla, I'm getting lots of vanilla. Lots of vanilla out of the nose. I would, when I, when I think oaky, I think smoke, but there is no smokiness to this. Yeah, it's multi-layered, but it's hard to tell what exactly the layers are there. There's still lights like a pillow on top of a pillow on top of a pillow on top of a pillow covering over, well, a plush mattress. But there is no real burn. There is no real bite. Hmm. This will either be rather blah, blasé, or it's going to be quite nice. One way to find out. Burns. Wants to bite, but there's nothing to it. Just burns. There's a sweetness, a heavy sweetness to it. Which, the sweetness. The, the sugary and the vanilla meet up together and they sort of are trying to match out the the burn that you get that's nice I'm trying to think what all they, they said all right, um, going blind here. Okay, so the sherry is supposed to add in dark dried fruits, slight nuttiness. Yes, there is a nuttiness in, in the palate. But as for the dried fruits, not getting it. Uh, hints of dark dried fruits. There is a bit of a, of a nice subdueness. I was, I'm tainting that, I'm, I'm giving that to the vanilla. Not so much any kind of dark type of dominant flavoring. I think dark would be like a dark chocolate or a heavy, heavy coffee. I'm not getting any of that, but there is, there is something. The uh, bourbon supposed to put in a sweet toasted vanilla notes. Yes. Lots of vanilla in this. Uh, toast. Maybe, maybe. Definite, like getting in vanilla is in there. <laughs> Just got a bite to her that uh, does not like to, to let go right away. Has about a medium uh, hang time on the palate. There's usually, I get a burnt tire. That's the alcohol. Uh, that just wants to creep out somewhere somehow when it comes to most other whiskeys this has a hint of that burnt tire but it's so lost amongst all the other layers that's more just uh, an afterthought in the shadows I do like this sweetness just not getting those those fruit notes that they're boasting about. Not at all. But yeah, it's nice. I I, I can deal with this as a uh, a nice summer summer sipper. That's one thing I like about Irish whiskeys is that they are uh, very on the light side compared to say an American bourbon or an American whiskey. Or anything else, uh, you know, 
nowhere near Scott. Scott just punches you in the nose. But in comparison to all the others, an Irish whiskey is, is very inviting. It's, it wants to sit there, be nice to you, and, and, and become friends. You know, bet on the game, as it were. And this does that. I would definitely add ice to it. Now, I know some of you are going, oh, ice. Oh, hold on now. It's like, yeah, it's got enough rough edges that I think the ice would take it down. And though it would take some of the subtlety the flavors, some of the subtlety layers, and merge them into a bit of a, a little bit of a mud, I don't think it would be too damaging versus the edges you'll be taking off with that one cube of ice. Give it a try. See what you think on, on measures on that. Since it is such a light flavor with a medium sort of hang time, I would have to say this is a nice summer, straight through sipping uh, whiskey. You could add it into your favorite cocktail. I don't know if it would help matters. It would be definitely damaging to the whiskey because you're losing a lot of its flavors that way. So I would say straight sip. It lacks the body for something heavy like winter or late fall or early spring this is definitely late spring summertime summer watching the rain come down that sort of thing fall early early fall after that the the atmosphere will just just take it over and kind of ruin it but that's my opinion give it a try see what you think this is glendalough <laughs> no i said that wrong Glendalo. It was another way of saying it. I guess that's the American way of doing it. Either way, there it is. Any particular comments about this product, down below, please warmly accept it, as always. Or better yet, go out, buy it, try it yourself. And let the rest of us in the YouTube Spirits community know your thoughts on Glendola Irish Whiskey. I tell you, it's not bad. It's, it's, it's harder and harder trying to find a good summer sipper. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think this is, I mean, it's not going to be, be top 10, but it is definitely, uh, well, it should at least make an appearance. And I'll be waiting for your opinions on it. Until next time, keep on drinking.